Hey, this is Sammy Reinstein, and you're listening to Conversation Starters. On this show, we talk all about bringing conversations back to B2B marketing and selling. Because if there's one thing we know about doing business in the revenue era, it's that the best customer experience wins. Through the power of our own conversations with drifters, customers, and special guests, we'll learn how to deliver a sales and marketing experience that puts the buyer first. Let's get into it. Elizabeth, how are you doing? It's our it's our second episode. Second hey, episode of season two. 2.2, if you will. <laughs> I'm doing great, Sammy. Thanks for asking. Um, really feel like we have the momentum going on this season, selfishly, I guess. Um, but loved that first episode uh, with Lauren all about artificial intelligence and lines right up with all the content that's been coming out this week. There has been a lot going on at Drift. Yeah, seriously. We released the state of marketing intelligence with the Marketing AI Institute and we have a webinar later this afternoon on AI. It's just been a month filled with a lot of content about artificial intelligence, which I'm super stoked about. I love learning more and really parlays well into our 2.2 episode. Yes. So in conjunction with the survey we did with the Marketing AI Institute, as well as the webinar coming out, we thought it was only fitting to have the CEO and founder of the Marketing AI Institute on the show. Yes, I am So excited to welcome Paul Reitzer on the show. Paul is the founder and CEO of the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Institute, an institute operating under the mission to educate marketers on the potential of artificial intelligence, or AI, and to connect them with AI-powered technologies. Not only that, but Paul can now say he is a published author, which we talk about more on today's episode. Uh, Two days ago, Paul and the Marketing AI Institute released the book Marketing Artificial Intelligence, AI, Marketing, and the Future of Business. Like we said, lots of content on AI recently. They've been been really busy over there. (laughs) (laughs) We are going to get into the details of the book as well as get some of Paul's insight into the state of AI today and how marketers can be utilizing it. And just a quick caveat before we get into the episode, this episode is nowhere near exhaustive of all of the learnings found in both the book and the survey. So if you want to check those out, we will link them in the show notes. So without further ado, please welcome Paul Reitzer on to Conversation Starters. Paul, thank you so much for coming on Conversation Starters. Yeah, this is awesome, Sam. We're looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, we're so excited to have you and dive a little bit deeper into AI. But Mm -hmm. before we get into all of that, uh, we we told our listeners a little bit about your background in the introduction. But I'm curious, what led you to create the Marketing Artificial Intelligence Institute almost six years ago? Curiosity, I would say. So I was, uh, I mean, I I owned an agency for 16 years and we started exploring AI back in 2011, actually after I wrote my first book. And it was just to understand what it was and how it might be applied to marketing and sales and service eventually. And there was nothing on the topic in marketing. Nobody had written about it. It was, you had to go read books from AI researchers basically. And so I just spent years trying to understand what it was and eventually arrived at some base understanding around 2015 and wrote it into my second book a little bit and started doing a bunch of public speaking about it and then just kind of started a blog and said, well, let's see if other marketers are curious like we are. And we just started writing what we were learning and thousands of people started subscribing and eventually it's like, well, maybe this is a separate business. So we split off Marketing Institute as its own company in 2019 and started a conference and eventually wrote a book. And here we are, (laughs) you know, we have about 32,000 subscribers now that follow along and learn AI with us. Yeah. It's funny, like a while ago, I feel like artificial intelligence in so many people's mind was just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, (laughs) like the Terminator, (laughs) like something very scary. And now it's so integral to so much of what we're doing in marketing, sales, and service. So, I mean, just in the six years that you've had Marketing um, Artificial Intelligence Institute, how have you seen, like, perceptions about artificial intelligence change? And how is the work you're doing then 
similar or, or different from what you're doing now? I think the the industry is coming around. So, I mean, I can just look at our data as a leading indicator. So, like I said, about 32,000 subscribers. We started an intro to AI for marketers live class that I run like every two weeks or so. It's a free online class. And we've had about 4,300 people register for the first 12 of those. So I think there's more people interested in the topic. Um, mm -hmm. We're doing our best to try and make it more approachable in terms of the messaging around it. So what I, yeah. what I keep evolving around is trying to find the things that matter to people. Uh, so it's not, they don't come in with that sci-fi perception of AI. Maybe it's like they know they need to do personalization. Okay, you mm. can't do it without AI. Or they know they need to reduce costs and drive efficiency. Okay, AI is really good at that. Or intelligent automate repetitive processes is really good at that. Like, you talk, it's kind of like when you talk to the C-suite. You talk about business outcomes. That's all they care about. Right. They don't really care how you do it, how us marketers do what we do. or you know, They just want to know they're going to achieve their business goals. And so depending on who we're talking to, we, we really focus on trying to make AI matter to individuals, like an AI for CMOs report or um, you know, AI for healthcare marketing, whatever it is. You want to drill into the thing that matters to them. Yeah, I think it's always helpful to go after the pain that you're feeling. And that's such a good point that you know, people care about those outcomes. And artificial intelligence is just a, way, a speedier way to get to those outcomes. Yeah, we just always explain it as it's just smarter technology. You're already yeah. buying conversational technology, you're buying email marketing, social media, paid media management, SEO, you're buying software, just buy yeah. smarter software. Buy from companies that are building smarter solutions that make you better and more efficient at your job. It's, it's really as simple as that when we explain yeah. AI. Yeah, so Curiosity led you to form this company. Mm -hmm. And now, I congratulations are in order because you wrote a book about <laughs> artificial intelligence. I mean, that is, some feet, uh, you know, many years ago, just coming from thinking about how artificial intelligence can help people to now writing a book on the topic. And you wrote it with your chief content officer, Mike Caput. So, I mean, what made you think about, you know, why, why now? Why, why write this book now? I, tr I started to write it in 2018 and I realized mm -hmm. I didn't know the story. Like I, I, I thought I, pretty clearly knew the beginning and the end, but I didn't know the present. So what I mean by that is AI is not new. It goes back to like the 1950s. And I felt like I had a pretty solid understanding of how we'd arrived at where we were today and how it's being able to be applied in, you know, in different industries like marketing and sales and service. And I, I had a pretty good feeling of where this was going to end up and the impact it would have on the industry and on jobs. But I was really struggling to tell the story of the current use cases, the technologies you would use, the outcomes you could drive, what brands were using it, uh, who the thought leaders were. Like all the middle part was still being determined. So the story just wasn't ready to be told in 2018. And then last year, you know, we really committed to let's let's do this. Let's tell the full story. We have amazing um, publisher Matt Holt and Matt Holt Books and Ben Bella. And we just teamed up and said, let's try and do this in a really unique way. And are there ways to infuse AI into the storytelling? Like, how can we use AI mm -hmm. in the creation of the book and the promotion of the book? Um, so, yeah, it was, I think the time was right. The technology had matured far enough. Our data, you know, through the reports we've done with Drift, the state of marketing AI in 2021, we learned a ton about where the market was at. And we used that data in the book. Like, we actually in, infused the state of marketing AI from 2021 into the findings of the book. And... Yeah, I think it, we just got to the point where it needed to be told. We, like People need to realize how integral this stuff is going to be to their careers and to the advancement of their companies. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, in 2018, you probably didn't imagine that there would be a global pandemic. <laughs> the world looks very different now than it did in, in 2018. And, you know, COVID, I'm sure, with everything going digital, and everyone having to lean on digital marketing, artificial intelligence plays really nicely into that story as well. Have you seen any sort of like progression, like COVID pushing people more towards artificial intelligence? Yeah, you're 100% right. The, the world changed over the last two years. You know, people went remote. We needed to get more conscious of how we ran the companies, the efficiency with which we ran them. Um, and simultaneously, language technology took leaps forward since 2018, 2019, you know, really in the last just year or two. 
and then even vision technology. You know, I, I just um, got my invite to use Dolly 2. So if anybody's familiar with Dolly 2 technology from OpenAI where you can give it a prompt, a text prompt, and it generates an image for you. I, I haven't even tried it. I just, before we got on this, I just got the email saying you now have access to this beta. Um, the tech has just transformed so much, part, partially driven by the pandemic and the need for us to all change. And now I think the economy is so uncertain and people are going to be more budget conscious than ever mm -hmm. and drive efficiencies in their business. So I just, if people weren't already moving to understand and adopt AI, it's almost becoming essential um, for businesses to not only survive, but thrive. Um, the ones that can build smarter companies in this time we're in. Yeah, efficiency has definitely been the key word around our marketing department and I'm sure all marketing departments, just, just with all of this uncertainty. Um, but with the book, can you give our listeners just a little bit of an overview of what the book is about and what it covers? Yeah, so the basic premise of the book is that every report we look at from McKinsey to Deloitte to PwC to Gartner, Forrester, they all try and quantify the impact of AI, you know, put a financial number to it. And while it all varies, they agree it's in the trillions, that AI will unlock trillions of dollars in value. That's an abstract thing to think about. Like to think about trillions is a really hard thing for any, any human to consider. Yeah. But the whole idea is, you're already seeing it in your consumer life. AI is infused into the technology you use, the applications you use, wouldn't be possible. So Gmail, Smart Compose, Netflix recommending shows and movies, Spotify learning your preferences in, in music, Tesla and autonomous driving, um, Amazon predicting next purchase. Like it's, just, it's everywhere in your, in your consumer life. Your business life is going to be the same. Every piece mm -hmm. of software you use will have AI infused into it to drive personalization, convenience, um, efficiency, productivity. It's going to be there, but it's not today. There are a lot of tech companies that have not truly integrated AI into what they offer, unlike Drift, which has been working on AI for years now to infuse it into the product. So you're, as a marketer, you have an opportunity right now to get a competitive advantage in your career and within your company by seeking out smarter technology. But to do that, you have to understand what it is, how to identify it, how to evaluate, that, evaluate the technology companies that have it, how to find and prioritize use cases. And then as you start to scale it up in your organization, what does that mean to your team, to your customers? And so you start, the book starts getting into things you know, beyond piloting and scaling. It's like AI for good. Like how do we consider bias and misinformation and disinformation. And so it's really a call to the industry that AI is going to change everything. And you don't have to be a data scientist or a machine learning engineer to understand this stuff and apply it. You can be a marketer, you can be the intern um, in a, on, a, on a brand side team, and you can learn this stuff pretty quickly and start driving smarter growth for your organization. Hmm. Yeah, as a consumer, I certainly expect that level of personalization through AI and in my business uh, you know, life as I'm looking at software and whatever that is, I do expect it as well. And when I don't get that, it sort of leaves this weird taste in your mouth of just like not a great buying experience or, you know, it's just something that's not super personalized to you. So I'll I'll give you a quick the, example, the conversation please. side. I mean, this is where conversation starters. I had an experience with a fast food brand that is not a Drift customer. I confirm it is using a different <laughs> conversational platform. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I, won't, I, won't, I, won't, I won't name the company. But they, uh, I, I got to my order. I ordered through the app, and then I got there, and it was supposed to be ready in 10 minutes. It, it was not. So I left and I came back 45 minutes later, my order was still not ready, and mm -hmm. nor was it dozens of other people who are now standing in the lobby without orders. So I go into their app and there is a ask blank name, um, the conversational agent. What do you need help with? I said, cancel order. It is incapable of knowing that. It was incapable of knowing that me and dozens of other people had orders that were now an hour past due and I just wanted my money back. I had gone and gotten McDonald's since then and moved on with my life. And I could not have a conversation with their conversational mm -hmm. agent. I could only get a, here's the <laughs> FAQ, go do this thing. And it's like, this is not, this is not intelligent. This is not understanding no. me as a, a consumer. And to your point, I don't care if it's B2C or B2B. I, I want it to know my intent and my needs. 
and mm -hmm. be able to help me. And that was not a great experience, but that's what AI makes possible, is to, to create more seamless, frictionless, a great tech company word, frictionless experiences for consumers. And that's what we all want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we have so much choice as both consumers and as people in, in marketing, like the MarTech landscape is what, something like 10,000 plus yeah. softwares out there now. So that one bad experience, like Paul, will you go back to that service no, again? No, my kids are like, can we get to this? Like, no, we are absolutely, I want my $35 back and we're, they're on like a one year penalty. We are not eating here for at least a year. Yeah, so it's so important to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as we said, the, the title for the book is Marketing Artificial Intelligence and the subtitle is AI, Marketing, and the Future of Business. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you think the, the work that a marketing team does with AI impacts the broader go-to-market team? I, you know, you could look at it as the marketing team up and what they're doing. And in that case, it needs to funnel up to business goals and business challenges. It's like, again, we talked about earlier, the C-suite. Like, you have to be mm -hmm. solving for something. The only reason you need AI is to do marketing in a smarter way that drives results. So mm -hmm. everything that marketing does is funneling up towards business goals in a perfect world. But from the top down, my basic thesis right now is there are three kinds of company in their future. There's AI native companies that build from the ground up with AI technology to build a smarter version of any, any company in the industry. There's AI emergent, which are companies that evolve to integrate AI into what they do, their products, services, marketing, sales, everything. And then there's obsolete. And so the basic premise is if you don't figure out AI and adopt it and build a smarter business, someone's going to build it instead of you. And mm -hmm. so I just, I feel like marketing, sales, service, customer experience, product teams, like everyone needs to be understanding that there are smarter ways to do what we all do and mm -hmm. work towards together and find ways to align the different areas of companies that maybe traditionally don't work very closely with each other. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. On the topic of owning and, and ownership, in your opinion, where do you think the ownership of AI should fall? I I think the CMOs have an opportunity to own it. They do mm -hmm. not, in my opinion, today. Um, I've talked with a lot of CMOs. We just launched this AI for CMOs program. We um, did a webinar and, and launched an ebook on this topic. And the research, you know, in essence, is showing that a lot of these CMOs are still at the beginner level of understanding AI and looking for the opportunity. And I think they're leaving it in a lot of cases to chief data officers, chief information officers, chief technology officers, that the AI is actually being driven outside of marketing. Then maybe they're just doing it in isolated cases where they're buying specific technologies. But I think the opportunity is there very quickly for CMOs to uh, adopt this stuff and build smarter marketing teams um, without a mm -hmm. doubt. My perception right now is it's likely chief digital officers that are probably mm -hmm. the drivers within a lot of enterprises. And ideally, it's people who hold both the chief digital and, and marketing officer title. Um, it, it, it's gen you don't, again, you don't have to be a data scientist, but being digital savvy helps. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of CMOs who got where they are on creative, maybe, you know, came up in more of the advertising realm and led massive creative campaigns or brand campaigns. And maybe it's just not their comfort area, but it can be. Like, it's it's not, again, we teach this intro to AI class, it's 30 minutes. And our feeling is, like, you, you will leave that 30 minutes understanding this stuff. And then it's up to you if you want to, like, go on from there. But it's very approachable. So I feel like CMOs can, mm -hmm. but I also feel like, interns can like anyone who's curious enough to go figure out how to do this stuff can make can be a change agent in their organization and i think it's a democratized thing because it's accessible anyone can learn it and and apply it to what they're doing yeah yeah it it's really things that we're already using in our day-to-day -day lives and then ai is just making it smarter like you said earlier so you know, if it's email or if it's advertising or programmatic or whatever that yeah. may be that AI is being applied to, it's things that we're familiar with. It's just working harder for you and then saves up your time. You can go you know, work on other things. Right. And you're not hiring or buying an AI to replace you. Like it doesn't do right. multiple things. You, you get AI to do very specific things. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the way I teach people is like if you're a podcaster or if you're a blogger, 
just make a list of all the things you do as a podcaster or blogger and find mm -hmm. the repetitive processes and then go right. find an AI to help you with those repetitive processes. You save yourself time and money. Um, yeah. And it could be as simple as that. And that's, you know, maybe all some people do with it is like, all right, cool. I, I get it. Smarter technology. I'll go search AI for the thing I do, AI for subject line writing, AI for email, whatever. And just go find a couple tools to demo and, and see if you can't save yourself five, 10 hours a month. Yeah. The report that is coming out that, that mm -hmm. might be helpful to a lot of our listeners is uh, the State of Marketing and Sales AI 2022, yep. uh, which Drift and uh, Marketing AI Institute put out together. Uh, so what was the methodology behind the survey? So in 2018, when I was creating Marketing AI Institute, the, the vision was to teach people AI, you have to give them very practical examples. So mm -hmm. what we call use cases, you know. Um, and those use cases are very specific things, like recommend content to website visitors or, you know, optimize email send time, things like that. And so we built a tool called AI Score, which has 50 of these example use cases. And you can go through and actually rate on a zero to five scale how valuable, valuable it would be to you to intelligently automate that task in some way, have AI help mm -hmm. you with that task. So you go through, you rate these things, and then anything you rate a three to five shows up on the final report page, and then we recommend vendors that do that thing. So it was created as a value-based tool to educate people. So it has a really high conversion rate. Like people who land on this thing tend to stay and do all 50 of these use cases. So last year when we did the first State of Marketing AI report with Drift, we said, hey, rather than a standard survey, why don't we do this? Because we know the conversion rates, the people completing these things is actually higher than a normal survey. And so mm -hmm. that became the basis is we put 14 questions up ahead, which takes like two minutes to answer. And then there's 50 use cases that if people choose to, they can actually sit there and go through and rate all these, learn example use cases in the process, and then get recommended vendors. And it's all free and ungated. You don't have to give your contact information. So that's what we did. Last year we had, I think it was like, 310 or so responses in the first one. And the 2022 report, we opened it up for about three month um, time where we were really promoting it. But we had 371 people answered all 14 questions um, and completed the full assessment of 50 use cases. But some of the questions and use cases have over 600 responses. So we have a whole solid amount of data, like a really good sample size that gets into things like how do you, you know, your level of understanding of AI. Are you a decision maker? Where is your company at in terms of its adoption of AI? What are the barriers to adoption of AI? And then all the use case ratings. So it's, it's the only research of its kind right now in the industry where we actually drill into this, you know, specific use case stuff. Um, but that's, that's the premise is we just use AI score and let people go through and get some value out of taking the survey in the process. And this year, it's marketing and sales. Yeah. So with sales, have you seen sales leaders sort of become more comfortable in incorporating AI? Sales is a was one of the first areas. So if I had to say over the last decade, where did most of the AI innovation go? It was, it was sales and advertising. Those are the most logical places to start. And the reason we expanded it this year was because last year we asked what areas of marketing are you involved in? It's like content marketing, email, data, analytics, social. And we had sales as an area. Now, granted, it tends to be like sales enablement, but we just put sales as a general. Well, 40% of respondents last year indicated they were involved in sales. So we're talking with, with Drift, and obviously Drift has an interest in, in all these areas, sales, marketing, service. So we said, well, we know that people taking are involved in sales. Let's expand it out a little bit this year, and then we can drill into responses from people who specifically say they're involved in sales. And then the report actually has a section dedicated to AI for sales, and the book has a chapter on sales and AI. So, yeah, I mean, it's... Depending on the industry, there are certainly some that are still working out of spreadsheets for their CRM. Like they, you know, it's just it depends. Is I think my answer, but definitely we see the more forward-thinking, like next-gen sales leaders, uh, a absolutely embracing all the ways AI can be applied to the sales process. It's it's great to see it evolving like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Paul, this, this podcast is called Conversation Starters, so I have to ask you this question. All right. How can artificial intelligence help marketers and sellers to have better conversations with customers and prospects? The, the core of it is personalization. 
So it, it is understanding intent. It's understanding, am I having a conversation with a customer, a prospect, a media person? Like, who, who is this conversation with? So going back to my unfortunate example with the fast food, the, it didn't factor anything in. My geolocation, how many other upset customers were in that same store, past interactions I've had with the brand, how much I've spent with the brand. Like none of that was factored in. So it was just it was a it was a dumb experience. It was an elementary experience with conversation. Whereas yeah. if you imagine your conversational agent on your site and someone hits the site and you immediately know, is this a customer? Is this a loyal customer? Is this uh, a detractor? Is this Did this person talk to our customer service team this morning on the 800 number and not get a fulfilled answer? So now they're here and they're upset or they're super happy and they're registered for our event next week and maybe they want to buy five more tickets. Like there's a world of possibilities every time an interaction happens, every time a conversation starts. And if you don't know the, the details around that and you're just treating each individual as visitor A, visitor B, visitor C, you're never going to have a fulfilled conversation. Like they're not going to feel at all like you personalized anything for them. So I think the easiest way to think about it is personalization. To the extent possible, you can use data without creeping people out. Mm -hmm. What can you know about them? And then how can you help them and not make them feel like you're just routing them to the fastest exit point for your brand. It's like the least possible chance that you actually want to talk to a human. How do we work every possible scenario so you don't have to interact with us? Mm -hmm. I don't want that feeling. Even if that's the end game of a really great conversational agent, you don't want the consumer to feel like that's the end game is to not right. actually have to talk to them. So. Right. I, and AI is making it more and more possible to make the conversation with the virtual agent, the digital agent, feel more like a human experience. Like we're going to mm -hmm. get there, but in the meantime, it takes a lot of work with both the vendors building the technology and the marketers envisioning the experience of the consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's a really interesting point too, like is this is this creepy? And it's like, well, you don't have to have your your bot or your AI saying like, hi, welcome back, Sammy. Last time you were here, you got size seven shoes. Here's Correct. another pair of shoes. I know you're it's upset with Asian A this content. morning. Yeah. Right, <laughs> exactly. Hey, last time you gave us a score of three. Right. <laughs> it's using that context of where they are and what they're telling you and personalizing that experience so that it's just better for them. Not, you know, you don't have to get down to the, the creepy level of using every insight right. that you have. Um, so, Paul, I have one last question for you, mm -hmm. just sort of bringing it full circle. Uh, so you started Marketing AI Institute six years ago, and, and now we're at the present, and you've learned a lot. You've, you've written a book. You've done a lot of these reports. So based on all of that, what do you predict that the next six years will look like with artificial intelligence? It's going to be hard to recognize, honestly. The, the rate of change is so dramatic. And if you would have asked me six months ago, will <laughs> AI be able to generate images? I would have said, absolutely not. There is not a single top AI researcher that I follow that has indicated anything like that is coming. Um, and yet here we are. A April 6th, mm -hmm. OpenAI releases Dolly 2. A month later, Google releases Imogen. And all of a sudden, we have two technologies that may obsolete the need for illustration, stock photography, and graphic design. It's very real. Like, I, I don't know if it will, but it, <laughs> it could. And language yeah. innovation is, I thought, was further than image generation technology. Mm. So the ability for the machine to understand and generate language is exceeding Moore's law right now. The power of language generation technology is moving faster than doubling every 18 months like Moore's Law with computer chips and computer processing. So when you look out and say, well, just language alone, the ability of a machine to understand us and to speak to us and to generate language, um, I can't look beyond 12 months in that space. Right. Like, so six years, it, it, it's just a whole, not, like AI will be infused into every piece of software we use. Uh, I can't see marketing technology companies being relevant if they don't have AI infused into everything. Um, and I think as marketers, there will be very few tasks that we will do where AI isn't helping us do them. Again, not replacing us, 
but it's going to be there just like it's ever present in our consumer life. You use it dozens of times today, you're gonna have that same feeling in marketing and sales and service six years from now. You're just you're just gonna use AI all the time and you're not even gonna think about it. Yeah. It's crazy how much innovation there is in the space. And I highly recommend everyone follows Marketing AI Institute uh, to keep up with that innovation. But speaking of, Paul, if people want to learn more or connect with you or learn more about Marketing AI Institute, where can they where can they go? The website is marketingaiinstitute.com. It's the home base for everything. You can get to the book from there. You can get to our online courses. You can get to everything. And then me personally, I'm pretty active on Twitter and LinkedIn are like my two go-to networks. Uh, LinkedIn in particular, you know, reach out. Let me know, you know, you heard this podcast. I'd love to connect with you. And I love hearing where people are in their AI learning journey. And, and if there's ways we can help, then I'm, I'm all for that. We have a, our kind of grand goal is to introduce AI to a million marketers by 2026. We want to change the industry by educating the industry. And I mean, Drift's been a great partner in that for years now. We've been working with Drift on that initiative. Um, so we we're appreciative of all of Drift's support as well there. Awesome. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciated hearing your insights and I love your mission and, and the goal that you have. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. I personally related to Paul's episode more than I expected to solely for the aspect of a failed food experience with <laughs> artificial intelligence. Just two weeks ago, I was ordering coffee, just like a basic coffee that should take, you know, like 30 seconds to pour. <laughs> I ordered it from my home, walked like 15 minutes, get there. It's not there. It says the order's complete. Not there. Mm -hmm. The place was packed, so it's not like I could wait around because I was going to be late. So I left with no coffee. <sighs> and it was so sad. And I literally ask anyone, Sammy was in the office that day, but ask anyone else in this office, they knew I was mm -hmm. upset. There's nothing worse than a failed artificial intelligence experience, but there's nothing better than a positive one. Yeah, seriously. And you can also turn it around with a good positive AI experience. Like if you had chatted into that chatbot and it was like, we're so sorry, here's your discount for the future, you know, that, that might make up for it. But when yes. it's bad, it's so bad. <laughs> yes, which is why Paul is on a mission to make sure everyone can have positive AI experiences that accelerates revenue for their business. Yes, yes. And we talked a little bit about personalization on the podcast today, and we, we talked about it with Lauren, too. And the whole theme of this season is having the right conversations. So we're very excited for the next episode. Adrian Barnes, who is the founder of the Best Buyer Persona Content Marketing Strategy. So all about understanding who your buyer is before you create that content for them and then how you can have conversations for every stage of the funnel based on understanding who you're talking to. We'll see you there. Thanks so much for listening to Conversation Starters. If you liked this episode, please leave us a six-star review by clicking the link in the show notes. And hit subscribe so you never miss another one. You can connect with me on Twitter at Sammy Reinstein and follow all of our shows at Drift Podcast.